Well, this is Commissioner Lumen May, County Commissioner in District 3. Thank you for joining May's message. What an exciting day we're having today. I'm going to introduce you to some people that you don't know but are making a difference here in our community. They're young people. So often uh, we get the stereotype or the preconceived notion that young people are not doing positive things uh, here in our community. But right here in Escambia County where we live, work, and play, we have young people who are every day getting up, going to work, being on time, doing great work and making a difference here in our community. And I want you, whether you're sitting in your living room or whether you're watching it on a podcast or whether you're at work, uh, to get to know these young people because they are the future of Escambia County. They are the ones that's making a difference. And I'm excited today because I get the opportunity uh, to see the works uh, that we implemented probably seven, eight years ago. We had a vision and along with our staff, Claire along. Well, I had a vision because I was a summer employment worker and someone gave me an opportunity uh, to work. Uh, without very much experience, uh, without you know resume, uh, without a reference, uh, they gave me an opportunity, and that's why I'm here today. And so we started a summer intern program, which giving uh, young people an opportunity to work here in Escambia County to gain valuable work experience. And so we've had hundreds and hundreds of children to go through our program. And one of the best parts of this program, through the work of our staff. Uh, Maisha and many of them, we have a retention program on how we try to retain talent. And I would say to you today, uh, this is the talent right here that's been retained here in Escambia County. Uh, they had opportunities to go far away. Uh, they had opportunities to go to uh, major cities, but they chose to stay here with their families here uh, in Escambia County. So we're going to let you uh, get the opportunity to meet them uh, because I'm sure you will bump into them some way. But if you never meet them, you never see them again, at least you can advocate that there are some young people who are doing great work right here in Escambia County. So I'm going to get an opportunity uh, to go around the room and introduce each one of these young people. And then we're going to ask them a few questions and we're going to let them say what they want to say. Uh, and then we'll conclude. Our first person is Jasmine Payne, who works at the library. Jasmine, how are you? I'm doing good. So tell me a little bit about what you do. Uh, so I work at the Pensacola Main Library and I started working, uh, um, working at the Summer Youth Employment um, in 2019. And ever since then, um, my confidence has grown. and. Um, I help customers, um, and I work at the um, I work at Reference, and I answer phone calls and help as, help people as much as I can. So, Jen, tell me, I mean, in, in participating in the Summer Youth Employment Program, because there's probably someone watching. How did it help prepare you for your job today? Um, has has how? How did the Summer Youth Employment Program help prepare you for what you're doing today, or did it? Um, it's helping my confidence, and I speak speak to um, speak to customers. With, um, um, a lot more naturally. Um, and that could be a tough job, and I deal with people every day. I mean, sometimes people, homeless people, come in the library. People who are just looking for shelter come in the library, and so I mean, you have to have a certain etiquette to be able to do that. Yes. And so, thank you for doing it. So our next person is Jalen Payne. Ms. Payne, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. So Tim, where are you now? I'm also at the Pensacola Public Library. So do you, did you start in the summer? Well, everybody started in the summer yeah. employment program. So how did the summer employment program prepare you for this? It's helped me with my communication and social skills. Because I'm a shy person. I don't really talk a lot. But going through the program has helped me. Great. So there's a young person that's looking for a job in high school that thinking about doing something. I mean, what advice would you give them? To stay calm. Um, I know some days it can be scary or tiring. But knowing that you have your coworkers, and your manager's with you, it can help your day go by good. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in our library. Now, our next person is a young man by the name of David Butler. And David, I, I tell you, I bumped into one of the top supervisors yesterday, and uh, he had great compliments about you, and I'm sure he's going to talk about you later. You're, you're in facilities. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you, did you participate in the summer employment program? Yes, sir. How many years did you do the summer employment program? One year. One year. So, how long have you been working in facilities? Like, like four months now. Four months. How do you like it? Like it a lot. So, tell me a little bit about your experience in some intern program. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I enjoyed it. You enjoy it. So, who's your favorite supervisor? <laughs> Don't answer that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Avery Wheaton. Avery, how are you? I'm great. How are you? So, how do I really pronounce your name? Because you know. My name is Avery L. Wheaton. Say that again. Avriel Wheaton. Avriel Wheaton. Avriel. I mean, and you work in the tax collector office. Yes. So you know everyone has to pay taxes, and that's all. All of us get paid. So uh, tell us a little bit about your experience. I mean, did you intern with us? Mm -hmm. Um, the program definitely helped me be better prepared for what I was about to go into. 
Working at the tax collector office has actually been a good experience. I've ran into a lot of, how can I say it? Well, be gentle. It's been a lot of, um, <laughs> Different experiences for me, but... <laughs> oh, you can remember all of them. Yeah, you know how to work. Yeah, she's I've real good. I've definitely learned to grow through it. Um, my supervisors always helped me, like, through it. Um, and it's been great, really. I like it. Though. Good. And hey, where do you see yourself in five years? Being a, becoming a dental hygienist. I'm, this is my part-time job. I'm in college right now. Well, good. You know what? Well, we need some dental hygienists because, you know, when you're in the public, sometimes you want people to make sure their smile is right, right? <laughs> so we need to depend on you for that. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. We're glad you're here. Big Ty, what's going on, man? Uh, nothing much. This is <laughs> so, Ty, you've been with us for a while. Uh, yeah. So how long did, what, how many years did you do the summer intern? Uh, I only did it once. You only did it once? Once was enough? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you got promoted, right? Uh, right, yeah. I was, I was with the internship program for one summer, and then they sent me out to the toll booth but near the end of the internship program, uh, and they hired me out there, and I've been here for two years. So can I tell someone, I mean, what you do? I mean, uh, most people go to the beach to understand the toll bridge, but kind of explain what you do a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, I just, uh, I manage the bridge. I just make sure everything works. Uh, I sell the annual pass. I do customer service for, um, you know, uh, for the, uh, the annual pass accounts. Uh, and of course, I give the toll booth numbers out to people who need them. Like, uh, I send them out to the traffic department and the hotels and things. Good deal. So are you enjoying what you're doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm not a people person. Because, uh, you know, of course, I talk on the phone all day, but. Um, I'm not a people I don't person, like either. I just talk to people. <laughs> yeah. in person all that uh, much um, and so being able to work out there and just stay on the phone is nice okay. well Ty we appreciate it I know that you, someone's probably watching but you were employee of the month or year or something uh, right? I was employee of the month employee of the month congratulations and that's what it's doing when you uh, can recruit young people and to be here less than two years and he's employee of the month I think Claire Long's been here you know 30 years she's never been employee of the month so I mean in just two years you, you, you've gotten it so that's a lot of people been, you know they just come to work every day and they never you know go any further than that so in two years you've done great so I'm doing my best. <laughs> that's all we do man every day we wake them up and no you are doing awesome so Kendall Atkins how are you I'm doing good so tell me a little bit about yourself um I work at the Scammy County Public Safety on W Street and I help patients I help verify patients' um, health insurance for the local hospitals. So you did the summer intern program? Yes, sir. How did it prepare you for what you're doing now? Oh, it has helped me tremendously. It has helped me better understand the world of health benefits and health insurances for not only like my future jobs or um, just in life in general. So what do you want to do? What, what's your future plans? I plan on being a athletic trainer. Awesome. You know, I'm kind of biased toward athletes, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that's good stuff. Thank and so what's like the most rewarding part of your job? Um, helping older patients. So helping them and help them understand that to get their health insurances right so they can pay their bill on time. Because you do understand you're going to get old one day, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, thank you for having old people like me. And, You're welcome. Yeah, and Ms. Claire. So, Cecilia, what's going on, Ms. Hamilton? Yes. Um, I, my name is Cecilia Hamilton. I work in the Neighborhood Human Services Department. Um, I'm in the segment where of Neighborhood Enterprise Division, where we help low-income citizens get housing. So, whether it's the first home time buyer program or it's SHIP, um, any type of way we can to help assist anyone or any of our citizens with housing, whether it's rent, utility, um, any anything of that sort, that's what I do in my department. So when you were going through the summer employment program, what skills did you learn that helped prepare you for what you're doing today? Time management is one of the main skills because if we had a project that we had to do as far as our home buyers program, that is something that was very important because we did not get whether it was a purchase order or a contract out in time, it would delay the process for someone to be able to get their home. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest thing that I really learned was time management, learn how to, how to balance what needs to be done first in order to get the process done. 
Wow. But that's very beneficial yeah. and very insightful. You, and so there, you know, I, I plug. I remember coaching you as a young lady on the basketball court and uh, your maturity level into where you were to where you are. Congratulations! And we know that you know most of y'all. This is a starter job, but what a great place to start right here in Escambia County. So we appreciate it. you get the opportunity to help in human services. That's pretty cool stuff right there, Miss Darian Atkins. Yes, sir. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. All right, tell me your name again, sir. Darian Atkins. Y'all remember that name, Darian Atkins. Darian, tell me a little bit about what you do, uh, and tell me a little bit about how the summer intern program helped you out. Yes, sir. So I work at the Escambia County Public Safety Department, and I do uh, mail distribution for them, and I verify patients' insurances. And it's, it has really helped me a lot with, I would say, customer service skills, because I'm not used to answering the phones all the time, and when we have all different types of people call. So it's like, you have to really be patient and try not to like, you know, get irritated a little bit. So <laughs> it tests you. Oh yeah, <laughs> you never make them happy. <laughs> it tests you because sometimes they be a little confused on why they're getting billed. So <laughs> you just have to explain it to them and you know. It takes a lot of patience. Yeah, it takes a lot of patience. I mean, I think that's a great skill set that you're learning. I mean, because as you mature in your field, no matter what you do, you have to have patience with people. And sometimes, yes. Amazing thing, people could just be rude even when you're trying yeah. to help them. And so, thank y'all for keeping that patience up. I experience it every Thursday. People for no reason come down and just rude. And so, sometimes we have to be nice to them. And so, thank you for being nice. Yes, we appreciate it. Well, next, I'm going to, you know, I have to introduce him. He started as an intern in my office and he's gone on to do great things. And Mr. Miles Wright. Mr. May. How are you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, Miles. Awesome, awesome. So, Miles, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, from the start to here and what you do. Well, it all started with you, right? <laughs> uh, I was your intern for about three years, and I've always kind of been a tech guy growing up anyways. Um, originally started school doing graphic design, but after a while I realized that I like it, but I'm not sure if I want it to be my career. So I went back to IT, and that's when I told you I wanted to go into the summer youth program in IT, and they liked me enough that after the program ended, that they kept me on as a contractor. And then after that, that March of 2022, I got hired on full time. Now, let me just say how proud we are you. And <laughs> like in a day to day, there's some young person, I mean, we know all our young kids are gaming and doing electronics. I mean, what do you kind of do in, in a day to day uh, with the computer? So right now I'm, I'm in between a lot of things. Um, I'm still doing help desk. So any county employee calls us, they will either hear me or my coworker at this point in time. When it comes to doing cell phones, I am the guy to go to. Anytime you do a cell phone setup, number transferred, anything like that, they're gonna come see me. I'm also learning how to do domain admin stuff now. So I'm learning how to make user accounts, deactivate users, give them proper permissions, people that need um, like Adobe Acrobat or anything like that. And I'm also working with our system architecture too, or system architect also. And with that entails me pushing out apps to phones and just learning how to make his job a little bit easier because he has some backup. That's why you surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. I need to tell you, everybody here is smarter than me, and so, so is Miles. Because everything Miles just said, I really don't understand. Uh, but I know that he can do it. And so that's what's so great about Escambia County. Look at this talent. Very talented people who are saying things, who are doing amazing work. Uh, and so you can do amazing work, but you got to take care of your health. And so we got Miss Kennedy here who helps people with their health. Welcome, Kennedy. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Tell us a little bit about your intern, a little bit about what you do. So I started with the program back in 2022. I worked at CBS as an associate, and then I did the program last year, and then I was working as an intern as a PSA. Um, I say What's a PSA? Patient Service Advisor. Per patient Service Advisor. I bet all y'all didn't know that. All right, we got to do it. Yeah, so. The program helped me with like my confidence also because I know I'm very soft-spoken, I'm very shy. Um, time management um, as well as adaptivity. I worked in fast food um, as my first job. Switching from fast food to working in a health clinic is a big change. Um, another thing I would say is the program is really good for people who are looking for like a first-time job, wanting to learn like you know work ethic, stuff like that. Um, me being a PSA, I check patients in, um, I collect co-pays, I verify insurances. Um, I also deal with different experiences every day, so <laughs> patience is a big thing for me. Um, and I'll say I enjoy working at the clinic. I work in the pediatrics, so seeing the children come in with a smile on their face always brightens up my day. 
Okay, I'll tell you, the CEO of your organization, which is a huge organization, uh, was bragging on you this past week because you checked her daughter in. And she, she was bragging on the program, which makes all of this game you kind of look good because you didn't know who was watching you, who was listening, uh, but you were dealing with the CEO, whether you knew who it was or not, and you treated her with such kindness and her children. Uh, and so thank you. I mean, so I think our words mean a lot. And so thank you for your professionalism. And I think that that's one of the things that we try to teach uh, inside of our summer intern program is the professionalism, the soft skills of being on time, being respectful, that it doesn't hurt to say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And so uh, when you look at the news and you see the media, you see all the negativity. But this is a positive. And so this is Escambia County. This is Pensacola. This is the future and the leaders. And so uh, we are very optimistic and we're very hopeful because we know that we have a lot of talent. And so as we bring this to an end, I'm going to give each one of you uh, about a 10, 15 second wrap up to just give a young person a piece of advice or just say whatever you want to say. Uh, unscripted, say whatever you want to say. Hey, Commissioner, you had me waste my time. I hope all y'all are still on the clock. If you're not on the clock, let me know that y'all are not on the clock. Uh, and then they should, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to your supervisors. But you have, a, you know, take 10 or 15 seconds. Say anything you want to say. Say hello to your grandmama who's watching it on television or to your homeboy or whatever you want to say. So some advice would be be patient, um, ask for help, um, get your manager if you can't, if you're not able to handle something, and yeah. Awesome. Um, basically agreeing with what everyone said, this program has helped me and I'm sure it will help you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we like her. Yeah. I'm bold for you. <laughs> My man. Uh, it's hard to follow that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I would go to her church. If she was a preacher, I'd go to her church. It'd be a short sermon. We wouldn't even be in there long. But it's hard to follow great speakers. But go ahead. Get up every day and uh, do your best. Can you say that again? I like that. Get up every day and do your best. Employees, get up every day and do your best. Thank you, man. Great advice. I would say take risks. Um, I'm, I'm a person that has social, social anxiety, but my job has brought me more into a talkative and just the more of a people person. So I would say take risks because you never know. Okay. Awesome. Uh, if you're coming out of high school and you don't really have a plan, great option. Hey. I mean, you you get a job regardless if you get in. And then you can figure out what to do after that. And being part of the county, it's like even if you don't like the job you're doing, uh, it's really easy to move to other positions. But once you're in, you know, there's all these options, all these different departments. Like, I work in a toll booth. I never thought I'd be working in a toll booth. <laughs> I didn't know that was the thing they did. Um, I'm on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd made a great point. And so, whether you're going to human services, engineering, environmental services, uh, facilities, building, uh, administration, uh, community centers, uh, the legal department, uh, the PIO, the marketing department. Uh, there's so many opportunities, as Ty said, uh, once you come here. And so uh, we spend so many dollars uh, recruiting. Uh, and with this summer intern program, we don't have to recruit. They're here. Uh, we don't have to go to Atlanta. We don't have to go to Tallahassee uh, to find the best talent. The best talent is right here in Escambia County. Um, what I would say is to be engaged in your workspace that you have been put in because you might not never know it may help you in every day-to-day -day life because everybody's jobs here at the Summer Youth Program has a long-term benefit for them. Amen. Good advice. I know you're listening. Um, my biggest advice would be always be willing to be teachable, no matter who it's coming from. It, it, if, even if you think it's wrong, they know more information than you do. They're teaching you. They're telling you from where they're coming from so you don't make those same mistakes. And never take these opportunities for granted. See, that was great. And you would say that, you know, listen, all of y'all young and rather you just want to start here and get a good start, that's a great place to start. Or rather you want to make a career out of it. I mean, most of the people are uh, older and they're moving on. People like myself and Miss Long, we won't be here very long. Uh, but there is great opportunity. Thank you for giving that advice. I would say come in willing to learn from your peers because sometimes we come in not wanting to try new things or just afraid to like open up. but always open up and try new things because you can learn something new every day from everybody that you work with. Absolutely. Great words. So when it comes to IT, a lot of times jobs want you to have X amount of experience plus schooling and or some sort of certification. When it came to the county, I didn't have any of that. And look at me now. Two years later, I'm about to be promoted for like the third time. Wow. So, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a great, it's a great place to get your foot in the door and potentially move up if that's what you want to do.
Awesome. It's about giving opportunity. And, you know, sometimes young people, you can be given uh, the door of opportunity, but you don't take advantage of it. And so you all should pride yourself because there was a door of opportunity uh, that was presented, but you took advantage of it and many others didn't. And so it's very important for us to give a window of opportunity, but also to give a ladder to get to the window so you can get up there. And I think that that's what your supervisors, that's what staff, that's what, you know, your mentors, that's what we all try to do. And, you know, how rewarding uh, to see you here today and to make these comments. And so we're going to let Miss Kennedy close it down. Um, I agree with what everybody said. Um, I would say practice having good work ethic. Like they said, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be, you know, be willing to be teachable, everything like that. All that takes you a long way, and I feel like that will help you get whatever you want to do with life. Thank you. <laughs> so anything else anybody wants to say? If not, it's been an honor and a privilege to be here uh, with this team. Uh, with these young people. I hope that you have learned something. I hope that you've been encouraged. I hope that you recognize uh, that there's so much talent uh, that not every young person is out committing crime. Not every young girl is out getting pregnant. Not every young man is out gang banging. Uh, that we have young people that are getting up early every day, doing the right thing, working hard, being mentored. To our staff, you'll hear from a few of our staff people here uh, in a few seconds. Uh, but thanks to the staff people uh, that took a chance, took a risk, uh, and saw the vision. Uh, this was just a dream and a vision for me, and it came into reality. And so one of the most important things that I've been able to do as a commissioner uh, was to create this program. Uh, and because I believe the greatest investment is not in roads and bridges, it's not in infrastructure, it's not in stormwater. The greatest investment that we can ever do is in human capital. This is the human capital of Escambia County. Thank you for helping me to invest in the human capital of Escambia County. One, two, three, team is scamming. One, two, three. Team is scamming. Team is Thank y'all. We appreciate y'all being here. Hello, this is Lumen May, County Commissioner for District 3 with May's message. What an exciting time we've had. Earlier you met some young people who are doing extraordinary work, working in the community who started uh, in a program uh, that we started about eight years ago, nine years ago when I was first elected uh, in a summer intern program. And it was very important to me uh, to give young people an opportunity. And that was important to me because someone gave me an opportunity. But with that opportunity, it's sometimes challenging because uh, it takes a lot to teach. It takes a lot uh, to motivate. And uh, there are preconceived notions that young people don't want to work or young people are going to be late or young people don't have the soft skills. And so uh, we have to go out and make sure that they can fit a department. And so we can't force people to uh, train uh, their replacement, uh, but we certainly uh, encourage it. And we have to find the right leaders. And today we are with three wonderful people uh, who are mentors. Uh, they're not only managers and uh, deputy directors and directors, uh, but they care about young people and they each have a story about young people that they've mentored and each one of them uh, have young people who came out of our summer intern program who are now uh, gainfully and full-time employed here in Escambia County serving you, serving your community. And so I just want you to meet a few of them. They are an example of the great leadership team that we have in Escambia County uh, that's investing in human capital and raising up the next generation of leaders. And the first person I have here, Mr. Robbie Freeman, he's a de deputy director of facilities and uh, I won't steal his thunder, uh, but uh, when we were doing our intake on yesterday, he came to me uh, with the story of a young man that he's mentoring and, and shared stories uh, of, of family conditions and it was just heart touching to me and I wanted Robbie to come but more importantly I said Robbie will you stop by he said I don't I'm off on Fridays but he said I love these children enough that I'll come on my off time uh, to share the story so Robbie thank you for being here we, you, we really you know thank you we really appreciate you and so you want to tell us a little bit about your department and the young man that you are mentoring and that you have in your absolutely um, you know with our facilities department we we Currently, you have about 365, 367 county buildings um, that we take care of. So it takes a vast amount of talent and uh, people to do that. Um, when I was introduced to this program, it's been probably about three years now, I thought, honestly, it was a babysitting service. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> a lot of people do. Yeah. That's why we have the poor teeth to make them do it. <laughs> but when you get into this program and you start uh, 
understanding where these kids come from Amen. and the background they come from. And you know, uh, Commissioner, that we've had a lot of issues here lately in the news with <laughs> kids in trouble, getting shot, getting hurt. And, you know, as adults, if we don't do something mm -hmm. um, and have a program like this where we can get these kids focused on something different, yes, sir. Um, then it's going to continue. Absolutely. And uh, so, you know, my wife and I, we teach K4, K5 at our church. And um, I'm a big advocate in, in, in teaching the next generation, you know, uh, some of the skills that my dad instilled in me when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Um, one of the things that, or two of the things that I grew up with was a good family values and good work ethic. Right. Um, there was a time when, and I don't want to chase rabbits, but I'm just giving you the background. Um, <laughs> no, take your time. When I watched my mom help my dad put his work boots on so he could go to work because his back hurt him so bad. I've, you know? I've been there. <laughs> and, and I've been in that same boat. But, you know, when you get to, you get to know these kids and you get to see their background and, and, and you've got one or two or three that come through the program that's hungry, and they want to learn, mm -hmm. well then somebody's got to step up. Amen. You know, and I feel it's our generation uh, to step up and mentor these kids and help them. Oh, Robert, I appreciate it. I appreciate you for saying the story. I mean, it's funny you said that. I, my dad was an old construction worker and I remember, you know, his back was hurting and we would have to tie his shoes some days just so he could get to work. And, you know, that work ethic, I think, is something that we learned in our generation. And unfortunately, uh, the generation behind us, uh, many of them have not gotten that concept, but what excites me are the young people that we have in this program right. that do get it. Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't have all success stories. We have some failures and in an organization as large as ours, we hire people every day and we lay people off every day. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly what happens. Uh, but cream rises to the top and, uh, Robbie, thank you. I mean, and I know that your level as deputy now, congratulations, uh, well deserved, well earned, uh, but for someone in your position to still put his hands on uh, is important to me. I mean, I tell Claire. Kids first. Kids first, man. I, I still go to community center. I'm going to still call and I'm going to still go to summer programs. I'm still going to be there. And to me, uh, it blesses my heart to know that we have people who have risen up in administration that still care enough to give back. So thanks, Rob. We appreciate you being here. Well, next is Ms. Clara Long, who, quite frankly, this uh, department comes underneath. Uh, Claire and I go back a long way. I remember back in high school, Claire, we went together. But I remember it back in college when you first started working at the county, I think, you know, as a mail carrier, a $6 an hour, and now you are a director. And you're, uh, you're mentoring the next generations of leaders like Cecilia. So tell us a little bit about your interactions with your interns. And I know you could intern with, you could go with all of them. Absolutely, Commissioner. Um, yes, I enjoy, I enjoy this program. I'm glad you have this program. Back in, when I was in high school, um, back in Mississippi, where I grew up from, they, we, we had the program, but it only lasted two years. And a lot of my friends that was in the program the first two years, and the third year, by the time they became seniors, a lot of them didn't have the funds to even uh, graduate and pay for cap and gown and, or even go on. So I, I really, really appreciate your enthusiasm, the initiative that you put in place, because it's really, it's really worth it and it's helpful. And I love, I love it, the, the, the motto, reach one, teach one, that is my motto. And so I do everything I can to instill in the mentors that I, the mentees that I have. I even mentor in the uh, in the school district. The last past eight years, I graduated two um, two of my mentees, and they've gone on and been successful. So I, this is something that I love; is dear to my heart, and um, I just love doing what I do, and that's why I'm working in neighborhoods and human services because it's all about giving back to the community. And that's what I love to do. Claire, you know, and I have to take a plug for my colleagues. Without uh, the other commissioners, we wouldn't have the funding. To, yes. When I had this dream, this vision, George Tuart was the administrator and Amy LaVoy was a finance person. And we had no money. We had to find it. I think we found 30 3,000 or 40,000, and we only had 17 kids in this program, that first program. And so how many people did we have registered this year, Claire? We had over 300 people to register. Uh, we've employed uh, about 165 right now. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, more funds, more sites mean more people. That's so right. that's what I'm hoping, you know, because everybody that apply would, you know, what we're looking for uh, placements and it broke our hearts, but we can only do so much with, with the funding that we do have. 
but hopefully in the future we'll be able to grow even more. Well, you know, I would say that we lost state funding this year mm -hmm. uh, and our colleagues, Commissioner Bagaj, Barry uh, Bender, uh, I think Commissioner Kohler may have been here at the time. We increased the funding because we got uh, cut with a career escarosa. Right. And so to go from 17 kids signing up to, you know, 300 kids, and we got 160 kids yes. who are now working this summer, Absolutely. meaning that they're getting up early, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're working eight hours, and so now they're not getting into trouble. And I, I think the remarkable thing, Claire, uh, we have kids from every housing project in Pensacola. Yes. Yes. We have kids who are going helping their parents pay their utility bills. Yes kids who are at Pensacola State who are buying their clothes because of this. And you know, I think one of the stories last year, a young person said, uh, I helped buy school clothes for my brothers and sisters. That's what I'm doing for my money. That's the difference that this program is making. And so, Ms. Chandra Jenkins, you're here from Public Safety. Tell us a little bit about what you do and your mentee. Well, I have been uh, a mentee with this program for the last six years. I Thank you. The EMS uh, billing manager and I've uh, taken on quite a bit of kids, well, I'm sorry, young adults. <laughs> young adults, they upgraded. Right? They upgraded, that's right. But as you stated, we do need to make an investment into our kids. Uh, it takes a village Amen. to raise them. And with them working in the EMS billing department, that's handling our ambulance transports. Um, they are learning how to be medical coders, medical billers, they are uh, picking up qualifications as attention to detail because that's critical how to be on time and dependable mm -hmm. how to communicate effectively because you need that Absolutely. Uh, they also are learning how to handle medical record requests because I am the um, EMS HIPAA's compliance officer there um, but we take them and each kid that I have had I have hired on as a Blue Arbor employee Wow. We worked it in my budget to keep them for that whole year. Thank you. And um, Thank I you. have also hired one. I have three now. Uh -huh. One I hired as a county employee. Good deal. And I still have two that's through my Blue Whopper. Awesome. And I do work it into my budget to continue to keep them. We're going to get those other two on the county. We're going yes. to we, get them in with benefits. Well, they're <laughs> in college. I, I, so I work around their school schedule awesome. uh, to let them know, hey, you young, get your education. You Amen. got your whole life to work, but right now, get your education and I'll work around your schedule. But I want you to know that we are building, I'm helping them build their resume Amen. as well. I don't want them to leave me, but I understand That's situations. Right. And as you stated earlier, a lot of them are using their funds to help pay for things in their household mm -hmm. for the family. That's right. So, but I do applaud you for this vision. Right. and allowing us to help you make it grow. Thank you, that means a lot. Uh, you've heard right here from supervisors, deputy directors, directors, managers, uh, talking about the impact that these young people are making. Uh, they are making a difference. And we're able to do this because of the support that we get from this community and our staff. And so as we wrap this up, I'm gonna give each one of you about 15 to 20 seconds to wrap it up and to just say what you wanna say. Maybe encourage other deputy directors to bring some in or other managers. And so what would you say, I mean, to other employees or, not only in county, uh, but to uh, uh, other private sector people that are looking to employ people. I mean, because we, we evaluate them, we train them, and we get them up. And as uh, Ms. Jenkins just said, you know, we want them to stay, but we want them to grow. More importantly, we want you to grow. We love for you to live in Escambia County. You don't necessarily have to work here, but we want you to grow here. So, Rob, I'll let you wrap it up, and I'll go around, and then I'll come back. One of the other things that we teach, you know, not just the, the skills part of it, well, we teach these, like uh, Mr. David Butler, he was sitting here earlier and, and you were interviewing him, he's very quiet. Um, you know, we teach him manly things like how to shake a man's hand. Amen. When you meet a man, another man, how to shake his hand, how Amen. to stand when you shake someone's hand. And, and so it goes beyond, you know, if you're going to be a mentor, you got to hit it all. Yes, sir. You know? um, and I'm sure with them teaching these young ladies how to be young ladies. Amen. You know, things like that, how to be respectful. Because um, I tell you, to be honest with you, Commissioner, it ain't my smarts that got me where I'm at. It's a good work ethic and attitude. I, I thought it was a good look. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the wife won't be standing there. <laughs> but no, it, 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 is a, it is a great program. And like I said, you know, this is where my, my heart's at, where my compassion's at. It's for uh, young people. Um, you know, and I, I, uh, I do this thing on the side where I take kids fishing, don't have dads, you know, right. get them out and teach them, just teach them things. Right. Um, and that's where, like I said, my passion lies and, and I am, uh, I'm looking to take the next step into this program to Amen. see where else, you know, I can be a part of and, and help out. All right, thank you. It means a lot. Thank you, Claire. Yes, yes. For me, I want to encourage 
other directors and other departments to take advantage of this. This is not a babysitter. These kids are eager. They're ready mm -hmm. to learn. We get them prepared for this mission, and we just hope as we, um, as every year, we want to grow. Absolutely. Thank you. Ms. Jenkins. And as Ms. Clara stated, to pick it back off of her, we want to um, teach these kids to, as the old saying, made a work I've done speak. Speak for me. Mm -hmm. And allow Come on, Willie Jr. <laughs> 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 we want to make sure that they build a good work ethic mm -hmm. so that they, they don't have to be micromanaged right. all the time. Yes. You know, we want them to understand, I came here to work, and they're going to give their best, mm -hmm. but they also going to take accountability mm -hmm. for if they make an error, they own up to it, and we're teaching them that. But this is a trial and error, and it's always going to be room for growth. Amen. Even now, with me being a manager, I still learn. Amen. On things. So we can't, you know, always try to knock them down. It it doesn't take much to knock them down, but it seems like it takes a lot to lift them up. Amen. And we want to be that hula hoop to have them covered. Thank you. And supporting them. Well, I want to thank all three of you for being here. Yes. Uh, you three are elevators. Elevator to success for our children. Uh, as Ms. Jenkins said, may the work I've done speak for me. And so uh, at the end of my service, uh, I want to say that the work that I've done has helped improve the lives. And so often she reminded me of, of an old Negro spiritual that made the work I've done. But I'm reminded of one that says, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody they're traveling wrong, if I can share the message that the master has taught, then all my living wouldn't be in vain. And so as we work today, uh, I would say to each of you, to each of us, our living is not in vain when God gives us a second chance and we give others a second chance to make the best of their life. Thank you for being here with May's message. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, we have some of the most talented children in all of America right in Escambia County. We love Escambia County. God bless you.